Yeah, well, showdowns are obviously a, a big occasion uh, in any normal season, but you know, given the significance that Walshie's um, had to both clubs, obviously there's uh, extra importance, I think, this weekend. And we're obviously concerned that the majority of our members and supporters might be unable to watch the game, and we thought it was important that they, they were able to come together uh, and watch it together as a group. They've been so united uh, over the past uh, 10 days or so, and we wanted that to be able to continue this weekend. So um, the, the live site at Elder Park was the perfect opportunity, um, and to that extent I really want to thank the SA Government, uh, the Adelaide City Council uh, and Channel 7 who have all worked with us to be able to, uh, to make this possible. Yeah, there's been a lot going on, uh, but again, look, over the last 10 days, I think the way in which everyone's pulled together just to um, to do what we actually talk about in this place quite often, which is just get the job done, um, they've all pulled together to make it happen, and, and that's why you know, said that, that when we contacted the SA government um, to ask whether they could help, they jumped at the opportunity and, and thought it was a great you know, occasion, um, said showdowns were already big, uh, but you know, I think this will provide you know, added atmosphere and and, uh, and an environment that will be, look, it'll, it'll be special and I expect there'll be thousands out there to be part of something that you know, will be truly remarkable. Andrew, it's a significant day tomorrow. Mm. How, will it be very much a celebration now of Phil Walker's life and his work for free? Yeah, I'd like to think so. I, I think tomorrow's obviously going to be a tough day, another tough day for the for the footy club and all of those in the football industry, but I think it's an opportunity to reflect you know, proudly uh, on uh, Phil's um, contribution to the industry over the last 32 years. Um, there'll be representation from right across the AFL industry, um, and I think it's, um, yeah, you know, I think it's as much about a, you know, a, a celebration or, and remembering fondly what he's been able to provide to us and the impact that he's made to us both individually and collectively. Um, so uh, I'm sure there'll be there'll be some laughs, there'll be some tears, um, and there'll be plenty of stories told. In terms of a long-standing tribute to Phil Walsh. At what point do you start working through that one and what would be the most appropriate way to handle it? Yeah, look, we've started those conversations and look, we welcome the suggestions that have come from uh, all parts of the football community over the last little bit. Uh, but I think it's really important uh, on occasions like this just to allow some time to pass and to digest all of the, the suggestions that are put forward to you know, just make sure we arrive on something that's going to provide an appropriate and lasting legacy. Uh, you know, there will be some, uh, uh, some opportunity this, this weekend at the showdown, obviously a very special game to, um, to, uh, to provide some appropriate recognition, but you know, given it's Port's home match, I'll let them uh, talk about that later in the week. When uh, the Dean Bailey decision had to be made how to recognise him at this football club, it was very much worked with the family. You're going down the same path. Yeah, indeed. So um, that's right from the beginning um, with all that we've done. We've been working really closely with Meredith and with Quinn and, um, and with the family to ensure that um, A, we were providing as much support to them as possible, B, we didn't do anything that, um, that they weren't um, comfortable with. Um, and look, I, I sat again with Meredith yesterday afternoon and just to talk with her about the memorial service and um, to see that she was happy with you know, um, all that was taking place and to, again, offer any additional support that we were able to. So that will be, that'll be an ongoing theme of our, of our conversation with, uh, with Meredith. Andrew, you just spoke about lasting legacies <coughs> um, and now obviously on this weekend. Can we expect um, a players medal to be named on the floor? Well, again, I just don't want to make any of those decisions just now, and uh, we actually spoke actively about not making a decision. Um, I think it's important not to land that today. Uh, you know, we will. There'll be some recognition, obviously, at this game this weekend, um, you know, given the the importance of the showdown, um, and given the timing of, of the showdown in particular, um, given you know, the tragedy that, that's impacted us on us all. Uh, but in terms of long-standing legacy, I think that's. Or they are decisions that can be made um, in the the weeks that follow. 
We talked about some nice stories being told. Have you got a personal favourite, Andrew? Uh, look, I've got plenty. I think one of the... Um, I've almost got one that's just... that's more recent. It was actually, it was actually just last weekend about the guys um, um, writing down their own personal um, stories or, 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 or sayings that Phil was famous for. And what struck me um, you know, heavily or impacted me really heavily was how many there were. And, and I think that's uh, a reflection of, the, of how um, unambiguous Phil was in his dialogue. Uh, he, and that clarity of, of communication um, was both fantastic from a leadership perspective, but amusing constantly. Uh, and you guys would have experienced that in some of the conversations that you had with him, um, and we certainly experienced that on a day-to-day -day basis. And um, yeah, the fondest will be will be private conversations that I had, where uh, um, that clarity of message was always front and centre. Andrew, how you say you're normality? You don't have still a fair bit to do, and a path to go individually for people. But how close are you to getting to a normal routine? Yeah, look, we're pretty close, I think. So, obviously, the, the weekend was tough, and you all saw that um, and experienced it. But you know, you would have heard us talk a lot over the last ten months around you know, elite standards, attention to detail, and just getting the job done. They were three phrases that you heard often, um, and they're three phrases that are being used a lot right now. Um, and that's what the focus of the footy club now is. It's about getting the job done, and. Uh, and that normality, you know, it's, it was in place today with the guys training. It's been in place, uh, sorry, and it will continue to be in place moving forward. We know that this week's an abnormal week. We know that tomorrow will be a tough day at the memorial service. Um, and we know that the showdown will take on added significance on Sunday. Uh, but we will do that um, outside of those extraordinary events. We're trying to ensure that the rest of the week is very much just around um, you know, playing in an elite footy competition where um, every percentage point's important. Andrew, you've been in sport a long time. Have you ever seen a lead up to a game that's meant to be about rivalry and a showdown or a derby or something like that? Have you ever seen one quite like this? Uh, no. Look, I think these are extraordinary circumstances and uh, I haven't seen a football community um, unite the way that this one has over the last um, 10 days or so. Um, not just here in Adelaide but right across the country. It's been uh, it's been extraordinary, um, it's been touching. Um, uh, I know that the support's been heartfelt, um, but, and it's certainly been appreciated by everyone you know, here at the football club and by Phil's family. Uh, and the, I think the showdown is just another example of that. I, I did joke with Keith Thomas uh, when I was speaking to him last week, um, where I just suggested that once we were sort of through all this, we could get back to the normality of hating each other again. So. Um, it might make things, uh, yeah, bring back some of that normality that we spoke about uh, earlier. Speaking, speaking about normality, um, where, at what stage is the club at, at even thinking about a new coach or appointing a new coach? Uh, yeah, look, I've got a pretty clear view as to how we need to proceed um, along you know, that path and the timeline that we need to, to act within, but um, you know, we'll continue to, I suppose, populate that plan um, over the course of the next few weeks. But again, that, that's not the focus for today um, and it's not probably the focus for this week. But we know that we've got some decisions to make later in the year and we'll make them.